having some coffee and cookies. I'm also having some acrylamide. That sounds like it's something that is used to make acrylic plastics. It is, but it's also found in food. We've known since about 2002 that small amounts of a chemical called acrylamide are found in a variety of foods, like coffee, like cookies, like the latkes that we make for Hanukkah, like Christmas cookies, and they're also found in potato chips, they're found in french fries. Basically, they're found anywhere where you have some sugar, that is glucose, together with uh, asparagine, that's an amino acid. Through a series of reactions called the Maillard reactions, a chemical called acrylamide forms. Now, when you feed this to test animals in high doses, they develop cancer. And any time that that happens, it brings suspicion to the chemical. We wonder whether or not, even in smaller doses over a longer time, in humans it may be a problem. Well, acrylamide has been looked into in so-called epidemiological studies, where scientists have looked at cancer cases and looked at the food intake to see whether or not there was any connection. And uh, while the jury is somewhat out, most of the studies do not find a connection between the amounts of acrylamide to which we are exposed and cancer. Nevertheless, there's a movement to try to cut down on the amount of acrylamide in our food supply. And there are several ways to do that. It's possible to use an enzyme called asparaginase and mix that with the potentially problematic food, and that breaks down asparagine, the amino acid, so it's not there to react with the glucose. But there is another interesting possibility that is being explored, and that is to genetically modify the potato so that it doesn't produce as much acrylamide. And furthermore, those potatoes also don't develop the black spots that producers are concerned about. When you drop or bruise a potato, it tends to get black, and that becomes commercially non-viable. Well, the new fangled potatoes, which have not yet been approved, will produce less acrylamide and less of the so-called black spot. What we have to understand here is that while there is biotechnology involved, there are no outside genes that are inserted into the potato. It's different kinds of potatoes that are sort of mixed together, at least genetically. So while it is a laboratory technique, there is no other species that is involved other than a potato. Still, it is genetically modified and some people are concerned about it, but before it's approved, it will have to undergo tests. However, what do you do at home? Well, for coffee, if you drink it in moderate amounts, it's not a problem. When you are baking, the important thing to look at is the color. The darker it is, the more likely it is to have some acrylamide. So, for example, we look at my potato latkes. These are a traditional Hanukkah food. They're made with potatoes, a little bit of flour, a little bit of egg in there, and they're fried in oil. Well, depending on the extent of frying, you can get a light color or you can get a dark color. The darker color is the one that will have the more acrylamide. So stick to the lighter color. The same thing goes for toast. If you toast bread, you will always form some acrylamide, but if you toast it lightly, you don't get much. If you toast it dark like that, you get significantly more. So the idea here is to follow the golden rule. That is, don't toast extensively. Don't get the dark color. When you're frying, of course, you should limit the frying anyway because of the high fat content. We should be eating more fruits and vegetables than fried foods. That goes without saying. We should be cutting down on french fries, potato chips. But if you're going to eat the latkes, and of course we should because there's more to life than worrying about every morsel of food that we put into our mouth, at least do your best to stick to the light rather than the dark. Follow the golden rule. The golden rule also involves eating. Mmm, that's good. Happy holidays.